Welcome to another edition of Dead Air Live. Tonight we have a special treat. We're going to be doing a show on the ancient science of cards. Good evening, Stefan Meyer. How are you this evening? Good. I'm good. So tell us, what is the ancient science of cards? Ancient science of the cards. It's a metaphysical system. It's uh, just the same way as astrology is, or numerology is, or the tarot. But it's distinct, it's unique, it's its own system. It's uh, lesser known than astrology is, but it has uh, very many distinct uses and many distinct advantages. Okay, now when I hear you talking about tarot cards, I think automatically, oh my God, that's psychic. Is this, is this on the psychic level? This is not psychic. Tar tarot, tarot readers do tend to be psychics. They're using the images on the cards basically just to give them some certain kinds of impressions. But when we do, uh, when I use a deck of cards, I'm just reading the cards just based on what their general meaning is, just with a general, general familiarity with the meaning of the cards. So there's nothing psychic about it. However, the, the cards are only one aspect. Uh, using a deck of cards is only one aspect. We have several tools with the ancient science of the cards. We have certain charts. We have basic just arithmetical calculations that we can do. And we can also work with an actual deck of cards. And each one, each of those tools has its place for a different purpose. So there are, di there are different purposes. Uh, there are different things we can use the ancient science of the cards for. First, first of all, if you want me to go further. Okay, but before we go any further, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, two other guests here that are going to be joining okay. us. We have here to my right, Lisa Gray, a very good friend of mine. Hi, Lisa, how are you this evening? Hi, I'm doing well, how are you? Very good, and we also have Liz Colborn Moretis. Thank you for joining us, ladies. Thank and I know that you're all gonna be participating in the show, and we may do a reading later on. We may do a reading later on. We may on. do a reading, and you're also gonna have questions, so we're all here to chime in to ask uh, Stefan questions. So you said there were different tools. What kind of tools are there that, that you use? All right, first of all, um, one tool is this book, which mainly consists Can we of, turn it around? Yes, yes thank you. Beautiful. Mainly consists of just charts with card symbols. How old are these charts? You said ancient science. Does this go back to when? Uh, the people who, who study this and promote it uh, say that this goes back, way back to ancient Egypt, biblical times, and so forth. I can't confirm that, but that's why it's called the ancient science of the cards. Supposedly, it's a very ancient science that got rediscovered and re resurrected and, in modern times. And you don't know who was the uh, originator, who created this? Uh, there's someone in the 19th century who came out with this, but... Uh, um, anyone, anyone, <laughs> anyone, we would know, no, not no, personally. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, the, that's, that's, uh, that's not so important, but, okay. it, but it's, it's an ancient science sure. that's been re resurrected in, in the modern age. So there are the, these charts that we work with, first of all. Sure. Secondly, uh, a, simple, uh, a simple pad of uh, paper and a pen and for arithmetical, certain arithmetical calculations, and then we use the, uh, we can use a deck of cards as well. Now, these okay. are used for different purposes, largely. Um, the arithmetical calculations are similar to those used in numerology, and they are used mainly when we're doing relationship readings, okay? Relationship readings use, uses mainly um, uh, arithmetical calculations. The charts can also be used, but mainly arithmetical calculations. So numerology is all about numbers. It's all about combining numbers to get other numbers and so forth. That's what we do when we're, when we do, that's the first technique and the most basic technique of doing relationship readings. How long have you been doing this? You said three years? Uh, two or three years. Do yes. you go to school for this? Is this, I mean, is this something you learn online? I, I have no idea. I, I, there is, there are apprenticeship programs you can go through, mm -hmm. uh, or a lot of people just learn, learn on their own. You know, there okay. are a few books around and, and some, a lot of it is you're just self-taught. It sounds like it, it, it's very complicated because there's a lot of different variables involved. I'm, it's, in some ways, it's, very, it's much simpler. It's really much simpler than astrology. Astrology is very complex. There's 
thousands and thousands of books uh, on on astrology. Right. There's so many different astrological methods. It's all computerized. In a way, because it's computerized, astrology has been made simple because people can just go online and get their birth chart and, and various things, and they can get automatic readings. But right. this is a little bit more still... This hasn't been computerized yet, this, this method. So right. this is the, the tools that you can use are, it is, there are some complications to it, but it's simple enough so that people can learn to do this for themselves. So you're not depending on canned interpretations as you often do in astrology. Astrology sure. is quite difficult to pick up as, and, and really learn how to interpret well yourself. Sure. This is not so hard. Here, why don't you drink some water? And mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask Lisa, um, I know that you came here probably with a question, and I'm dying to know what it is. I guess I guess we're all going to find out at the end of the show. But you're going to be doing some readings towards the end of the show? Possibly. We could. Now, one of the things that um, I was look, doing some research online, and I just kind of like it stopped in my track, and I had to keep replaying it over again on the ancient science of cards. And there was this woman, and she was saying that Obama's birth card was that where he likes to lend other people's money. That's what his birth card signifies. And I went, what? I just said, are you kidding? And I asked you this question before the show when you said, did you know, finish the statement, because this really blew my mind. Well, that's a, a radical simplification, okay? The person okay. is saying that just because uh, Obama's birth card is a nine of diamonds, and there are, and there are, that's a superficial reading of the Nine of Diamonds. But if you like, I can try briefly to explain how we get there. Because first of all, we you have... We would love that. All right, I'll, 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 give a, I'll try to give a simple explanation as I can, okay? And to do that, I'll, I'll use this chart first. And we can get a view of it right here. Beautiful. This is where we start with the cards, because the cards are like a book. Just... You know, a book with chapters and page numbers. It's just, sure. you know, when it's in a deck of cards, it's shuffled, but, uh, and it's all, you know, in a random order. But there mm -hmm. is a natural order to the cards. Mm -hmm. And the natural mm -hmm. order of the cards is from ace to king. Ace is low, king is high. And the order of the suits is hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right? Sure. That's the natural order of the cards. Okay. So... Due to this order, you can also say assign values to these cards as well, mm -hmm. 1 through 52. So the ace of hearts has a value of 1. The two of hearts has a value of 2, and so forth. All the way down the line, you get to the king of hearts, which has a value of 13. I'm totally confused. Oh, are you really? <laughs> I, I am. Oh, my God. I, I mean, this is to the me simplest just... part. <laughs> are you getting uh, this? <laughs> um, a little bit. Okay, good, good. It's, it's, an, it's like, this is the natural order. Okay. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, to the king of hearts, then up to the, then the up to the... No, no, I, I get the, I get the uh, numeral, the, 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 the numerical order, mm -hmm. but I don't know how it associates with... This the, is the first card? The, no, I don't know how it associate, associates with the birth. Oh, we're getting to that. We're oh, getting okay, to that. You're okay. jumping ahead of me. I'm, jump, I'm <laughs> jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead of me. Okay, so this is, I want to just get the, get the idea here that all the cards have a numerical value associated with them. Okay, okay. All right? oh, that's no, all, no, oh, no, I understand that. Oh, you understand. Sure, oh, okay. sure, sure. Okay, now we'll take a look at, the, yeah. at this chart, the second chart here. This is the chart of finding your birth card. Okay. That's the first, really the first thing after pointing out that they all have a numerical value. So can we talk about... Like, Let's talk Lisa, about our birth cards. Yeah, like Lisa, why don't you talk about your birth date on this mm -hmm. and what does it mean? Okay, uh, well my birthday... Well, is... let's first just find your birth, your birth card. What's, what's your date of birth? Okay, it's December 30th. December 30th, so let's find it on here. We look for 30, we look for December, and your birth card is the Ace of Hearts, okay? Let's try Liz. That sounds like a good one. Well, the well, Ace of Hearts? I mean, that sounds like the biggest, the baddest, the biggest, baddest <coughs> boy in the world. Let's go around to okay. get everyone's okay. and then we'll talk Liz? about it. Liz? August 9th. August 9th. Okay, so we go to 9. And we go to August, right? The Four of Diamonds is your birth card. June 2nd. June 2nd. 
we go to two, we go to June, and your card is the two of spades. Okay. And my birth card? Yes. June 1st. <coughs> you're June 1st? June 1st. I didn't know that. Whoa, and my card is you're a the Gemini. Three of spades. Very cool. Now, this actually, I did, actually did look these up beforehand. Actually, it's sort of interesting. This is just a coincidence that we're all sitting here together, right? Really? But it's interesting. We've got uh, two spades, we've got a diamond, and we've got a heart. We have no clubs represented at the table here. But we have a one that is an ace. That's you, Lisa. Ace of hearts. We have a two. That's Jojo, two of spades. We have a three. That's me, three of spades. And we have a four for our diamonds. So we have a one, two, a three, and a four here at the table today. That's okay. sort of interesting. Yeah. So. Uh, one of the first things that you can do with uh, relationships is you find a composite card. You know, you simply add up the values of the two cards, you get a new value, and that's the composite card that shows you the basic energy between the two people. So you're adding up the composite of all of us here together. Yes, you could, for instance. Is this a good you, thing? Well, if you had, yeah, we're, this is pretty good. We got a pretty good mix here because we got a one, a two, a three, and a four. Wow! One, if you if two, you add one, two, three, and four, you get what? Um, a one, a two is three, and three and three is six, and six and four is ten. Ten, you get a ten. So it's going to be some kind of a ten. In fact, is that good? In fact, if you if you were if you actually add up, it's going to be your value is thirty. Okay, because we have this chart here. Remember, you're the four of diamonds. The value is thirty. Yours, the value is one. Yours is uh, 41, 41, and 42. If you add up all those and then subtract 52 and, and come up with the remainder, you get 10, which is the 10 of hearts. So that is the composite card for all of us together. You know, so this little group, we have a composite card, and that's the 10 of hearts. Do you do that when you're with people? You add up, oh, I'm with four people. Let me add up the... the uh... I don't do it so much with groups, <laughs> but you can do it with groups, but I certainly do it... Uh, with anyone who I'm having any any reasonable degree of interaction with and enough so that I can ask them what their birthday is. Because uh, when you get into this, you really are asking people for their birthdays okay. as much as you possibly can because that's practice. Every time I can find out someone else's birthday and I can get an idea of what my interaction with, is with them, I get a little more deeper understanding about that birth card as well. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you a personal question. I hope you can answer it. Before you married your wife, did you, like, check out her cards? <laughs> I you... may have, but that did not have anything to do with, uh, with my marrying her. But we do have a good composite card. We oh, are you actually the composite card, she's a queen of hearts, and our composite card is the two of hearts, which is uh, a good, it's a good composite card to have Beautiful. between two people. Yeah. Okay, good. And what about George Bush and Obama? You were saying that they have the same birth card. Uh, I said that to you previously. Previously, yes. at a previous conversation. Yeah, you brought up the fact that uh, Obama is, his, his card is a nine of diamonds. Mm -hmm. uh, George Bush, also a nine of diamonds. They're the same birth card. And there are 52 cards, 365 uh, days it's of pretty, the year. It's, I think that's the first time they've had back-to-back -back presidents with the same, same birth card. It's pretty strange, you know. And some people do say that Obama is sort of his... Uh, Administration is a little bit of a continuation of George Bush's, and uh, well, you can make up your own mind about it. But so why didn't you? Card. Why didn't you say something about this before he got into office? I mean, <laughs> 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 the, so uh, you know, all it's fairly simple. I mean, all your in order to learn this science, all you really have to learn is uh, four suits, the meanings of four suits, the meanings of thirteen face card values, yes. and then if you get a little deeper into it, as also the planetary influences come into play, if you're familiar with astrology, you'll know those already. And that's really all you have to know. And if you know where to look and you know how to interpret those basic values, you have a basic, you can do this for yourself. <coughs> Nine of diamonds, for instance, which is Obama's and, and George Bush's uh, birth card. Diamonds have to do with values. They have to do with money and finances very often. Mm -hmm. They don't just have to do with money and finances, but mm -hmm. they can have a lot to do with money and finances. And nines have to do with losses, you know, completions, endings, losses. Oh. So uh, nine of diamonds in a superficial sense is a, uh, 
is a goodbye to your money card. So that's why you went onto a oh, site and, right. and it's a it's a it's a it's a financial loss card. So uh, that's why possibly why uh, we got into a. It may have something to do with the fact that. George Bush ran up a huge deficit, and that Obama is trying to deal with it and not, with not too, without too much success. So mm. it may have something to do with that. There's also one other factor, though, sure. and that is that um, some people say that you can that history can also you can also apply the system of 52 to history, so that in that case, uh, history would run in 52-year cycles. And so if you start from the date of zero. And go to 2011. All you really would have to do is divide 2011 by 52, and the remainder would be the current card that represents this year. Now, I'm not going to do the calculation. I'm not even sure what the what it is, but I have a feeling it's possible that this year we have the nine of diamonds for the card for this year as well. Oh my goodness! So not only do we have a president who's a nine of diamonds, I think this is a nine of diamonds year too. It could be. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> so that that would possibly mean that we've got some financial problems ahead still for the rest of the year. But the good upside would be that if that's true, then next year is going to be the ten of diamonds, and that's a much better financial card. Could be that things will be looking up next year financially. Okay, so for people who are unfamiliar with the system, mm -hmm. and you had to speak, let's say, in layman terms, because you want people to come to you. They're going to go to your website, and they're going to be finding out how you can, is it help them, advise them? What word would you use? There are three basic things that I can do, or three or four basic things and that I can do. And those three or four basic things are? First of all, I can tell them, based on their birth card, a little bit about, a little basic things about their personality. Sure. Can, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Number two, they can get a little bit of an idea of the current influences that they are dealing with in according to this system sure and a little bit what they can expect in the future now this is not predictive it's not fortune telling it doesn't go far into the future uh, there's nothing there, but it, for instance I usually use a, a year an approximate year so if someone comes to me and wants to know what's ahead for for the coming year uh, just in terms of finances or in terms of uh, relationships or, or in terms of work or employment, various mm -hmm. things, I can give them some clues as to what influences are coming their mm -hmm. way. That's one possibility. Another thing that I can do is I particularly specialize in relationship readings. Relationship readings are when a person comes and says, I have a relationship with this person or I want to start a relationship with this person. And, um, through, and I can tell them a lot about that relationship. But the, uh, the way I use... The relationship, the relationship readings are largely based more on the arithmetical calculations, like we, like we did here. That's more akin to numerology. Okay, it's the, more to say more, again? It's more similar to numerology. The numerology, technique, okay. the technique that you use for relationship readings is more similar to numerology because you're adding numbers up I largely. See. Okay. Whereas, whereas the technique for for telling of what's coming up for the year is a little more like astrology because you're dealing with influences that are behind you and ahead of you in your <coughs> path that you right. fix fix circumstances, things that you can't. Just like you have the planets revolving around, you have uh, the, from the moment of your birth, you're on a path that's already charted by the cards so you just have to look it up in this book and I can tell you you know what your card is at the at the at the present moment that you're dealing with okay so about Lisa's mm -hmm. birth date can you give us four different things about Lisa that you can tell us based on her birth date well let's let first of all what uh, you're an ace of hearts right yes and how old are you I'm 43 well, let me just show you what, what I would do if, if Lisa came to me. Sure, I she, can't believe you asked a woman how old she is on air. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, <But> Lisa. <laughs> the, I can I sort of understand That's that okay. viewpoint, but the trouble, the trouble is it's okay. if I don't know how old she is, then there's no way I can do it. <laughs> and if she tells me the year, then I'm thinking in my mind, well, how old is it? And that's, that's, that's hard. So what I would do is I'm going to take this away for just a brief moment. And I poked you with that. Yes, and Sorry do about me that. a favor and have some oh, water. Thank you. And let's turn this around so the camera can see this, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you're 43. Yes. Sorry, I had to ask that. <laughs> I, I would go here to these spreads and I would look for age 43. Oh, wow. Right here. 
that's age 43, it's marked up a little bit. And then I will look for her birth card, which is the Ace of Hearts. If anyone sees it, just tell me. It's a little hard looking upside down. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, so um, this would tell me this. This would tell me some things. I'm, I'm not. I, I don't really feel like doing an interpretation right now. But I'm just. Sure. I'm just telling you how I would look at this. I'd find your your birth card here. One of the things I would look for is what card it's displacing, which is displacing the Queen of Clubs, which means that in the the normal spread, this the, this is the spot that's owned by the Queen of Clubs. So you're you're dis, you're displacing the Queen of Clubs. That's uh, that's. <coughs> that has going to be a, a key to some, a lot of your experiences during the, during the year. And also, I'm going to look for this card, the Ace of Diamonds, which is sitting over. Oh, no, that's not sitting over. No, I'm looking for this card right here, the Two of Diamonds, which is sitting over the Ace of Hearts. These, these two cards will tell me a good deal about it, about what she's going through this year. Okay. Uh, is this the time for her to ask you a question? Since she could ask a, me a question. Just, since it's open, I mean, your your spotlight's on you, Lisa. Uh, I guess my question would be in regards to relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I guess love and romance for the year. Okay, but you don't you don't have a relationship. You don't have no, someone's birth date. I don't. Okay. You have um, to have a specific person. There's there's two ways I would answer her question. You know, one way is the, the, a method we haven't talked about yet, which is actually with a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. The deck of cards is used when you have a particular problem, question, or issue, if you have a very specific problem, question, or issue. Now, you're right now asking a sort of general question, which is, is there a love in my future, you know, anytime soon, right? Right. So your birthday was December, right? Yes. So that means you don't have too much left in the year. Um, so... Um, what we look at is we look at some of the cards that follow, that follow your card here, and if I'm looking for relationships, I'm going to be looking for hearts. So, um, you do have, uh, you do have the Eight of Hearts, you know, as, as your Jupiter card this year. So that's not necessarily a card that's n not necessarily going to bring you a relationship exactly, but the Eight of Hearts is a very strong uh, a card. Just you know, a, a str it gives you a lot of personal magnetism, and it's very good in social situations. And uh, you sort of, it sort of gives you a sort of charismatic presence. And if you have it as your Jupiter card, I, I don't know if you have been feeling that at all this year, but you may have felt it. You know, during it may have sort of come in handy for you this, you know, for this year, okay? Now, if I was looking for Can, her, can, can I just ask yep. you a question? What, you said if you're feeling your Jupiter <coughs> card, what does that mean, to feel your Jupiter card? Well, it's difficult uh, to explain, but what I'm looking at is there's a yearly spread here that's and it's about the 12 succeeding cards, and you go from right to left. So when you start with her birth card, and you go, this is going to be her Mercury card, her Venus card, her Jupiter card, her Saturn card, and so forth. Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter card, Saturn card, Uranus card, Neptune card. These are all the planetary influences. And what you have is you have the, the, the year starts with the birthday. So everybody is on a, a yearly cycle. Your yearly cycle starts with your birthday. So your yearly cycle started December 30th, and it will end uh, December 29th. So you're pretty much you're getting you're getting into your into your current year now, and um, the year is also divided into seven seven week periods. So based on if I uh, there's a chart in front of the book, I could look her up. I could tell her at a glance what period is she's in. I could tell her what her current influence is as well. Can we do you that? Want, well, we can. Yes. We can I mean, why that. not? This is this is what we're doing. I, I we right. want to know how does this work. All right. Because when people come to see you, All right. they want to know what are they in for. All right. Well, we're going to look for okay. we're going to look at December thirtieth right here on this chart. And what's the date today? The twenty seventh of September. Okay. So you'll see that her. Uranus period, which is the sixth out of her seventh periods, started on um, uh, on September 17th, and it's going to go until um, November 7th. Yeah, 
What's, no what's going to happen? What's going to go? She's, this is her Uranus period, her sixth, she's, there are seven periods okay, in the year. Okay, right, you said this that. This is her sixth one. Yes. And the sixth one goes from September 17th to November 7th. And what does that mean exactly for her? For her, that we would go here and we take a look. This is her Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus card. So this is the influence that she has right now. But what is Until, that influence? Well, she's got a nine of hearts. What does that influence. mean? Uh, nine do you of, understand what I'm trying to get I at? I do, here? I do. Hearts, are, uh, hearts represent emotions. Okay. Okay. Nines represent endings and losses. Okay. All right. Now, uh, that could mean a lot of things. I mean, it could mean that, uh, right, it, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean uh, that she might lose a friend mm -hmm. or someone close to her during this period. Or it could simply mean that she may have during this period a sort of just a feeling of, you know, a feeling of emotional loss. Not necessarily she, that she's had a mo an emotional loss, but she may feel... She has. She, she lost has. one of her best friends in the world. Recently? King Mumu Gigi Boy yeah. Willis. Her cat. Her cat. King Mumu Gigi Boy <laughs> Willis. <laughs> King Mumu Gigi Boy Willis. <laughs> yeah. So just recently? Uh, it was in July. Oh, in July. Are you still grieving for the cat? Yeah. Oh, well, that could have something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. So, oh, that, yeah. that cat, King Mumu was my world. Was, yeah. <laughs> it was huge. So that Does makes sense. Does the number mean anything? The, the nine? nine. Right. Yeah, the nine, nines generally have to do with endings and losses. Okay. Uh, but they, they, all the numbers have a positive and negative aspect. You know, so there's a positive aspect. To that. Nines aren't totally negative. Nines, uh, because when we go through endings and losses, we have a more universal perspective, and it gives us empathy. You know, so nines are great cards. You know, for pe for for giving people a universal perspective on life. It's a, they're great cards for giving people empath empathy. People who are nines are you know very good in in all sorts of fields that require. Uh, empathy, whether you're a counselor or whether you're uh, whether you're a psychiatrist or whether you're working for some type of cause, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, um, a particular per the nine of hearts. I can, if you want to think of a famous person who has a nine of hearts birth card, Hillary Clinton is a nine of hearts as a birth wow, card. Cool. So that gives you some idea about you know what type of a person that might be. Great. Okay. So what can we tell Liz? About her birthday. <laughs> don't know. Uh, <laughs> you were a four of diamonds. Yes, what can you do? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all want inquiring minds yes. want to know, Liz. They do want to know. <laughs> they do want to know. You have to tell me your age, Liz. Okay, I'm 48. 48. All yes. right. All right. So you look marvelous. You Thank look marvelous. you. I have no qualms about saying what my age is. All right, Good girl. So uh, we would look you up at age 48. Okay. Okay. Um, and tell me your birth date again. August 9th. Okay, so we're just also going to look up uh, August 9th here. Don't let the nine fool you. I have no empathy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're you're going to be starting uh, your Venus period, which is the, the second period, um, on the 30th of September. That's in a couple of days. So you're just at the end of your Mercury Venus period. means love, right? Venus has to do with love in general. Yes. So we're, look, we're looking at age 48. And we're trying to find the Four of Diamonds. Where, where's the Four of Diamonds here? There it is, right? Yes. Four of Diamonds. And so we would go, this is her card that she's got with her present period for two more days. And then on the 30th, she's going to have a new influence, which is this Ace of Spades. And what does and, that and, mean? What does that yes, mean for Liz? what does this mean? It could mean a lot, a lot of things. I don't I, like the look on your face. <laughs> I, make, I, I make faces all the time. Well, I, I, there's all, I always make faces. You just just saying bad things to me. <laughs> that was beautiful. I don't like the look in your face. The, the Ace of Spades is a very, is a very interesting card because the, it, it can mean a lot of things. The Ace of Spades, spades have to do with action, with work, health, and wisdom. Oh, and, wow, Liz, uh, that sounds great. I'm wise. And the, so the Ace of Spades is actually the symbol of, the, of metaphysics and of the entire science of the cards. It's, it symbolizes the entire science of the cards, so, and also other metaphysical disciplines. And um, 
it can be read in many ways. Uh, at the simplest, it can have to do with starting a new op occupation because mm -hmm. aces represent beginnings. So it could represent a new job, a new occupation, something like that, a new, new, new work opportunity. That's at its simplest level, okay? But aces also have more, ace of spades also has more involved meanings. It could mm -hmm. have to do with uh, taking an interest in metaphysics or in the science of the cards. It also is a card of secrets. Ooh. So um, um, that could mean a lot of things. You know, that could be mean <clears throat> having a secret or dealing with a secret or dealing with someone else's secrets. Well, Liz have does a have a secret that she's going to share yes, with us. Yes, I'm full of secrets. <laughs> so, Liz, what do you want to share with us tonight? What is your secret? Yes, you want to know what I do for a living. Yes. I'm an artist. Okay. I do, I do what everybody wants to do artwork, but I want to be a successful artist. I want to be a successful artist. Yes. And I would like to quit the other things that I do that keep me eating so that I could be an artist. Okay. Can we Full do like, time. can you do a reading with the cards I with do? her? I could do a reading with the cards with her. I, 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 I am like, I'm charged up for that. Can what? you like give Liz your full attention and just like Bring out the cards. Well, all right. Roll the, out this the is, This is the third technique that we use, okay? So I showed you yep. a little bit about sure. uh, doing relationship readings, a little bit about combining the values, their sure. arithmetic. I showed you a little bit about the charts. Sure. Okay? So this is the third technique that we use, which is an actual deck of cards. And the deck of cards is used specifically when a person has a question, a specific question, problem, or issue. Okay. All right, now... The way Liz phrased it, it, it did sound like she has a, a question or problem or issue, right? I mean, she sort of yeah. phrased it. She phrased oh, it. Yeah. She phrased it in a little deeper manner than just, oh, what's, you know, what's coming up for me in the coming year. Liz definitely. Well, has how much effort do I want to put into it? And in money effort? and devotion. How much effort do I want to put into into this? being a successful artist? Yes. Well, do you have anything to fall back on? Not really. <laughs> well, <that's> probably a <laughs> lot. <laughs> so uh, I can tell you what I do when I when I do readings of this type. Sure. Um, as I said, these these are not psychic readings. Right. Um, uh, I use an ordinary pack of cards, sure. not tarot cards. Mm -hmm. uh, when I do a reading like this, I try to get as much information from the person as I can first sure. about about what the what the problem is and uh, then I'll proceed to lay down the cards and um, if the first or s the first and second cards look like they have a bearing on the question then I will usually will proceed sure. with the reading sometimes if they don't then I will reshuffle and start again but if, sure. if I get a good feeling from the first first or one or two cards then I will do the reading and usually I just talk through what the basic meanings of the cards are, what the symbols are, and we try to relate it to what her, her issue is. And sh she's free to participate with me and to ask questions, and, and it can be like a discussion. And that can be true of the four of us around the table. I mean, anyone is free to, to, to chime in and ask questions while we do mm -hmm. this. How many times do you have to shuffle those? I'm um, just curious. I, I, I shuffle only, there, there is no, no particular number of times okay. that I shuffle, and there's no particular time when I decide that uh, I've through with shuffling. I just sort of do it, you know. I, yeah. I don't really worry about it too much. Now, that is the one mysterious. Let's, let's, let's. Now, if I went for a tarot card why don't you cut? reading, just cut. I would have to shuffle, I think. And cut, right? I have no idea. I, I think, that I think of, that's what I have to do. I think that sort of depends on the reader. Okay. I should be playing poker. I'm getting all these aces. I feel like you I'm know? at some kind of card tournament right now. This is very cool. All right, let's... Um, What's going on here? Let's give it a try. Do we want to give it up and move the question over? <laughs> you're like, oh, I don't know. You flip over yeah, this ace know, card. You're ready know. to switch over to something else. Let's 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 try it. Let's try let's try these cards. All right. Okay. Stefan, his processes. He thinks. He his mind is going through this wonderful process because he wants to make sure that he gives you an answer that is on an elevated level. He he brings 
it's almost like your cards bring hope to people. And I, that's what I love about you. That's what I love about what you do. Okay. So if he's like silent and he's making faces, this is the process that he goes through with his cards. That's right. He's the, thinking. Don't, don't pay attention to the faces. Yeah, don't but pay I, attention. But I will, I will say one thing, and that is that um, the card reading may not give Liz a solution to her problem. It may or may not. Sure. Okay. Sometimes the cards simply reflect what is going on in the person's emotions, mind, and so forth, and it just reflects what they're going through. Sure. Okay? And sometimes there is not a solution. The solution is, um, if the time is right for a solution, then a solution will, will be presented. Sure. If the time is not right, it's sort of like uh, I was listening to the news the other day, and they were talking about the, the Palestinian situation and how many decades we, they've been you know, after a solution. Well, mm -hmm. if I did a, a card reading for, for the Israeli-Palestine situation, I'm not going to come up with a solution right, yet, am right. I? Because so, they're, they're probably not ready for one. <laughs> so what is going here? And you can, you know, you could talk to Liz. Yeah, it's, I, it's, I need to You know. can direct her energy there. Well, the first card, this first card is um, simply the, what we call the, the question card. It simply represents, you know, the issue at hand. That's all. Mm -hmm. And here we have the Ace of Clubs. The Ace of Clubs, at a very basic level, it rep simply represents a desire to know and a desire for information. Yeah. Okay, Clubs represent the mind, uh, communications, and information. Mm -hmm. Aces represent uh, imp the impulse, you know, to find out. So, so Aces simply represent, you know, Having it's almost aces are almost like a question mark card, you know. They, okay. it's, it's just a desire, a desire for information. Now, I should say that um, um, the ace of clubs is something you you, you can't tell. There's something that I only uh, people that are familiar with the cards will tell you. But they alternate with a card called the two of hearts, which is sort of the two of hearts is sort of in back of the ace of clubs. So um, what that means is the two of hearts is, a, is an emotional card. The ace of clubs is a mental card. So sometimes when the ace of clubs comes up, it can signify that there is a certain back and forth between you know. A mental and an, and an emotional, you know what I'm saying? In other words, this, this problem that you have may register with you on both levels. Do you understand? It can be a yeah. desire for information, but in back of that, it can be an emotional thing. And it could be that when you think about this problem or you have this problem, that you sort of tend to go back and forth. Mm, true. And that's true? Yes, uh, very see? true. See, I love this. Okay, and what does the Six of Hearts mean? Well, the Six of Hearts is actually sort of represents what she just uh, what she just said. Right. Here this is this second place is the Mercury place. So Mercury represents energy. No, no, represents the mind. It re oh, represents what mind. is going on in her head right. at the moment, okay? Sure. Now we just said that the question card is an alternating card and there's an emotional card underneath here, okay? Now we're coming to this card which is um, it's, it represents the mind, but what do we have? We have a heart, which is an emotional, emotional card. Well, wh you know? where does that leave Liz? Well, it's just this is really describing her situation so okay. far. So okay. far, it's just describing her situation. Right, so but six has to do with karma. Okay, so uh, this is this is a karma card. So. Um, um, Good it, karma or bad karma? Uh, both or either. Or it's 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 a card of it's a card of uh, that brings balance, you know. But it also is can be a static card. Okay, it can be a static and then changing card. So that uh, what this could signify is that one of the things that she is preoccupied with in her mind is the fact that conditions right now are static and unchanging. True. She's nodding her head. Okay, what's next? <laughs> okay. Okay. This is the Venus card. The That's Venus love. card. Well, it represents the emotions, it represents what she's feeling. Okay. Okay. And here we have an eight of diamonds. I'm not feeling love. <laughs> <laughs> here we have an eight of diamonds. The eight of diamonds is a uh, diamonds have to do with finances, mm -hmm. and eights have to do with power. Okay, so this is a financial power card, 
okay? Wow. So, you know. Wow, Liz, that sounds great. Yeah, so, but probably that's, that's, probably this is signifying what she's, you know, she would like to have more financial power in her life. Most Who likely. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't, exactly. Okay, next card. This is often the most important card in the reading. Why? Because this is the Mars card, and the Mars card has to do with actions that um, the person is either taking or needs to take in the situation. And what, what, what happens is that, well, most people that come for a reading of this type when they have a problem, they are looking for, the, the, the question is, what should I do? You know, what action should I take? So this is very often the most important card in okay. the reading. Okay. And, and what action should she take? Oh, you do not know that. This yet. is spades are represent action. Right. Represent action. And eights, as I said, represent power. This is a card that represents persistence. Okay. So be persistent. Yes. Wow. This is loud and loud and clear. Okay. Be persistent. Got right. that, Liz? Yes. Got that, Liz? <laughs> What are these? What are these cards? Are they speaking to you? Yes, they're right, speaking this, to me. They are. Yes. Okay. See, see, we're, and what we're doing is this is. I'm not using any psychic. I'm just explaining the meaning of the cards. I'm just laying them down. All we're doing is depending on the right cards to to, mm -hmm. to show up, and these are expressing her own subconscious. And this is she's she's, she's okay. I want to. She's telling us. She's telling herself this. Yes, really. I want to know what what story are you getting so far from what he's laying down here? Keep working on my artwork. Keep pushing it mm -hmm. out there. Keep applying for showings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is it, it, you, know, you know you go for it when you yeah. have when you Keep have doing it. when you have the Mars card that answers the person's question. Right. You know that. You know, that is the I right didn't direction. get this crucial card that said, okay, this is a pipe dream. No, exactly. Go buy some in this scratch tickets, give it up later. Right. You exactly. know what I mean? In this particular position, there could have been some cards that would have come up in this position that mm -hmm. say that would have said, you know, give it up, lady. You know. Okay. But we didn't get that. So what's next? Okay. The next we'll just see what else comes up. This is her Jupiter card. This what? is her blessing card. Wow, that sounds cool. Is your blessing card? My blessing card? Yeah. What is a blessing to you in the, a blessing to you in the situation? And, and like an asset, you know, what, okay. you, what, what you have to draw on. You know, this is what you have to draw on. Okay. And then here we have a club, queen of clubs. That's a very strong card for, for um, management skills, communication skills, artistic skills as well. Okay. You know, this is, this is a very strong in charge female person. Okay. Uh, All this, right, this Liz. card as your yeah, Jupiter card should be that. giving you a big sense of empowerment. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, that looks good, oh, isn't God, it? Look another ace. Ace hearts. Well, this is the Saturn <laughs> card. Oh no! Wow! <laughs> I'm making faces. <laughs> this is the this is the Saturn card. He's the only guy I know that draws an ace, and he's like, well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the the ace is um, uh, the Saturn card represents the obstacle to you in the situation. Okay, it represents the obstacle to you in the situation. This is always the card. Out of all the cards that I lay down, I'm laying down nine cards. Out of all the cards, this is the card that has to be interpreted <coughs> negatively. It has to be interpreted negatively. You have to interpret the, the downside of the card in order to give the sense that it is the obstacle. All right? It's the economy. That's what it is. Well, in this case, what I would say is, this: you, we do have a diamond, which is a financial card, but aces represent impulse, impetus, you know, what I, what this is telling me, and I could be wrong, but what th this is telling me is an obstacle would be putting the cart before the horse or okay. uh, looking for financial gain in the short run. Okay. Maybe not going to happen, but that's not a reason not to do this. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. And that very often you get these things where, you know, very often the Saturn card 
is you have to look at the way it's paired with the uh, with the Mars card. They very often represent a pairing, and here it's a very obvious pairing. This is a persistence is needed. What is not needed is looking to uh, short-term gains, mm -hmm. and don't. And that's that's what's not needed. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also a pretty obvious card, you know, given what we said before. This is the uh, Uranus card. This is simply represents uh, additional help in the situation, somewhat similar to the Jupiter card. Here we have a Three of Diamonds, which is a creative, uh, a card of financial creativity card. So there are possible ways in which you may be able to You, 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 ha you have certain financial creativity at your disposal in some way. Here we have the Neptune card, and you can see how closely matched the two cards are. Again, remember we had two eights here, now we have the king and queen of clubs. Okay. I see two this aces. And two aces, you're right, two aces also. And mm. we've got the king of queen of clubs. The queen of clubs, remember, was her Jupiter card, and this is, you know, her empowerment card. And here we have the Neptune card, which is, this is what is her most, her deepest wish in the situation. And look how close the deep, their deepest wish card is to her empowerment card. They're practically the same card. You know, the king and queen of clubs are just like, you know, they're almost like the saying the same thing. So that means that your deepest wish is very close to your actual, you know, blessing assets and capability. Sounds like you should just so keep you're, on going. You're, yeah, you're, it sounds like you should be keeping on going and you're not nearly as far from, you know, what you need to be doing as you are. This is the result card, which I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, that, that's, a, that's a completely card. That's that. This card is now completely out of the blue a little bit. A four of hearts is well. Let's put it this way: this is an emotional card, but fours have to do with emotional stability. All right. So I think what it's saying is the result is going to be. Um, a calming of the emotions, you know, okay. for you. You know, I think re realizing that the, the elements that are involved, the persistence that's involved, the assets that you have, the fact that you're doing the right thing, and so forth, and I think this reading is, 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 should exercise a calming influence on you, and that's the result card. Okay. Wow, that's awesome, Liz. Sounds good. Does that sound good? Is yeah. this, is this, um... You feel good? Yes. You feel good? She looks like she feels better than she did. Yeah, like, you she you asked look the like you got some kind of an, an, an answer. I know. Yeah, so she, what kind I mean, of artist are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a painter and I'm a collage artist. Wow. So I do both. And I know you're excellent at what you do. You have that artsy look. Good I luck used with to be you. a graphic designer illustrator years wow. ago, but I decided that I wanted to do what I wanted to do instead of what other people wanted me to do. Good for so. you. Go for your dreams. Yeah. Stefan, that was awesome. Okay, we uh, have about 10 minutes. Some, 10 minutes. Uh, it's about 10, 10 minutes, minutes left in the show, so what, make it come. What, are, what, are, what, what questions about Lisa? do you have? Uh, we can do Lisa. Um, do, are I, there any questions we have? No, I'm, I'm just like grooving. What about you, Lisa? We have 10 minutes left, so. Um, so, questions? what, like another problem? Well, I, if yeah. you wish, it, I mean, if we wish, we could also. Take a look at the charts as well, you know. Um, okay, yeah, if we could look at the charts. Now, what, uh, you gotta remind me about that age again, 43? Yes. 43, yes. <laughs> now, I should say also, but boy, just in passing also, that uh, Lisa's the ace of hearts. She uh, is. I'm just gonna put this up just, just, uh, Beautiful. just uh, to show people one more time <clears> here, because <throat> this might be of some interest. You, the, it might be some interest just to notice the, the, the distribution of the, uh, of the cards in the year. We have about four minutes left. Four minutes left. Yeah. Okay, very quickly, okay. I'll just show you that uh, it's not, as you might think, you know, not every card has the same number of dates associated with it. 
Okay, you can see that most of the middle of the chart of the year is taken up with diamonds and clubs, and that there are far fewer spades and hearts. You see that? Mm. And in fact, certain of the cards mm. are very rare. Okay, Lisa has one of the rarest of the cards. Okay, she's an Ace of Hearts. There's only one day out of the year that's Ace of Hearts. That's December thirtieth. There's only th yeah, only one day out of the year. There's so that makes Lisa very special. <laughs> yes, very special. There's only, there's you have a one in one, 364 or 365 chance of meeting uh, an ace of hearts. Is there any way that she can promote that when she meets a guy? And she <laughs> says, you know what? <laughs> You're pretty lucky. <laughs> I'm an ace of hearts. <laughs> well, a, I mean, the ace of hearts is, is an interesting card, too, because it's the lowest card in the deck, okay? But, you know, there is a certain paradoxical quality to it as well, you know, because the ace of hearts is, in a certain way, the, the symbology of it is that it's the lowest card. It's the least worldly card. It's the most innocent card. But, you know, uh, at the same, and the king of spades is the most worldly card in a way but at the same time you could you know this you could switch it around you could see that ace of hearts is actually the highest card rather than the lowest because from a spiritual point of view you know the the meek shall inherit the earth you know the ace of hearts is a very spiritual card wow so, lisa oh. lisa is special <laughs> lisa is very special i've known lisa mm -hmm. for how many years five years yes about five years lisa is one of the most calming people that I've met in my life. You're just very, you're, you're an awesome person. You're oh, an awesome person. You. Well, I just, thought, I just thought I'd point that out, that the Ace of Hearts is a very rare card. You know, Great. So uh, a two, a two or three of spades like we are, there's about one in 60 or 70 people. Oh, so, so we're not that unusual. N not that. Uh, four of Diamonds is an even more common card, that about one in 30. One in 30 people are Four of Diamonds. But you're still special, Liz. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do we have time for? Uh, we actually have a few more minutes than, than we thought. I think we have about five. We have two minutes. Okay, so I was going to look you up for 40, age 43. We have a couple of minutes, so make it count, Stefan. I'll try to make it count. Mm -hmm. uh, Ace of hearts, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, we already looked at that. We said we, you had the eight of hearts in Jupiter, right? Yes. You want to take a look at next year and see if you've got anything coming up next year? Let's just take a look at next year. Yes. That's great. Where's the Ace of Hearts? <laughs> oh. <laughs> she went right for it. <laughs> oh, the Ace of Hearts is in its natural place uh, for age 44. So that could be really something for you because look at this. You've got the... Three of hearts will be your Venus card. The four of hearts will be your Mars card. The five of hearts will be your Jupiter card. The six of hearts will be your Saturn card. Wow. The seven of hearts will be your Uranus card. And the eight of hearts will be your Neptune card. So what does this mean? a lot of hearts. It's a lot of hearts. Sounds good. <laughs> it's a yeah. lot of hearts. So, um, Sounds like a lot of love. Well, it, it certainly does. Uh, I... Stephen, I'm not making any predictions, <laughs> but it sounds like an interesting year, age 44 for you. Okay. So, awesome. so, Lisa, it's going to be an interesting year for you. Liz, it sounds like you're in the right path to be an artist. And Stefan, it has been such a real treat to have you here doing the ancient science of the cards. And I will encourage everyone to go and see um, Stefan. You could check out his website. You could list it below him and uh, people will can see you and they can come to you because you're going to be doing, uh, what do you call this readings? Is that what you call it? Uh, I, do, what, what I, do, do you call I it? do three kinds of readings, basically. I do relationship readings. Yes, relationship readings. I do solution readings, which is with the cards. Solution readings and? And I do destiny readings, which are a little bit of a misnomer because destiny readings are really just looking at your current influences oh, and what's coming readings. up for the coming year. It's not your long-term destiny, okay. but it's what's coming up for, for the coming year. But it's also worth noting that you don't have to come and see me in person because I do these readings over the phone as well. Stefan Meyer, Ancient Science of the Cards. Thank you. Good night now. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Stephanie. you. Thank you.